so today we're going to cover appointments and it's a two part series and I'll be showing you the basics of using the internal scheduler. So with HomeGage, you are probably aware that we have the appointment manager or the scheduler that allows you to you know, book an appointment on a calendar, blocks off a time for you. You could do some really cool things that basically save a lot of time, like add an agreement to an appointment, add an invoice, so you can get paid online and people can actually sign online um, electronically. So, um, and it's all kind of wrapped up in an automated system that allows you to send out emails and you don't have to type the emails. So it's all, you know, filled out for you, but looks personalized because HomeGage will fill in the person's first name, the you know inspection address, the time, and things like that. So this first one is just basic setup, and we'll go through adding and getting it all optimized, and then the workflow of how to schedule. And then on Thursday, I'll be sharing how to share it with the public. Some folks might be nervous with that, so my intention is on Thursday to show you how to share it with the public in a very light way so that you still have full control you know and show you basically a couple techniques on how to get used to letting go for a minute and sharing your online calendar with maybe one of your very close agents that you work with a lot just to kind of get your feet wet this technique works really well and once you kind of realize that you still have full control even though people are basically filling in their own information it saves you time because you're not having to type all that stuff in. You still you know, have control over the time. You can still call them and change things and things like that. But I'm hoping that on Thursday, it will give some of you, you know, the tools to just start to use the public scheduler because it really, really does just make everything go a lot faster. I mean, I know that home inspectors often have the voicemail that says, hey, I'm sorry, I'm not available to take your call right now. I'm in a crawl space or on a roof. So, you know, a lot of times when people get that, they'll just hang up the phone and they'll call the next person who's available. So this, having the public scheduler as an option will allow you to get booked for those kind of instances and you're not constantly rushing to call people back and things like that. So that's kind of the plan for today and then what that looks like for Thursday. So I hope you attend both. All right. so. I'm on my home gauge dashboard and you can all follow along or just uh, listen, but I'm on a new account. So I really only have uh, one inspection kind of loaded up here right now. If you're brand new and you've not done anything, you know, you won't have this middle section. We're going to focus over here in this area right now that's called appointments and pretty much most of the time will be in this sub menu. So if you want to click on appointments, there's a couple things before you start using appointments that you'll want to set up and add. Um, you don't need to always use an agreement every single time you take an appointment, but you know it's just best practice to cover yourself and protect your business and, and yourself from liability. So to add an agreement, so you can click a button and link it to an appointment so people can sign it online, um, it's pretty simple. So under appointments, we'll go to right here at the bottom and we're kind of working our way from the bottom up. So the bottom is like steps that you need to do to set it up. And typically the setup, you're not going to have to go back into these areas too often. You know, once you kind of have your agreement loaded up, it's a template and it just gets added to an appointment with a, with, with a click. We'll start with the agreement templates first. And I have one already loaded up here. You might, you know, have a different screen and I can actually make my screen look like yours real quick. So I'm gonna just delete a couple of these agreements. All right, so your screen might look like this. If you've never used HomeGage agreements before, you might have a little button there that says that you have to agree to using the agreements feature. So if you do see that, Go ahead and click I agree um, and then you'll come to a screen that looks kind of similar to this where it says edit agreements. Um, once you do that, the first step is clicking on create new agreement. 
At this window, you're presented with three different options. So create new agreement from scratch you can just give it a name here, any kind of name, and then click create agreement document. You could do that and that's just going to be a completely blank page where you can either type out an agreement, which I would not recommend. Most people are not going to do that. Um, or if you're copying and pasting a whole agreement document from another source, um, you would use that. But I do have a couple other things that are just going to, let's say, expedite the process for you. So even if you do have an agreement, maybe from your insurance company, so to get a home inspector insurance, the insurance companies, from what I've understood, they actually can give you a discount on your um, policy if you use their agreement. So if any of you need some advice on your agreement, I don't know if all the companies do this, but I've heard from some inspectors at a recent in-person training that their insurance company provides the agreement and if they use it, they get a little bit of cut off their policy price. So check that out. So I'm gonna skip over this create from scratch because we have a couple of better alternatives. We've got one that says start from sample agreement. So we have a couple sample templates that you can apply super easily. Um, we have a sample ASHI agreement, one that's called sample CREA. So that is the California real estate something, something. Uh, <laughs> we've got a sample home gauge one, which is super, super simple. Definitely, if you've got nothing, you can totally use that. We have a sample InterNACHI. And then this one is one that I created a few years back. And the idea of the sample starter agreement is basically for those people that do have an agreement document somewhere from their insurance company or something like that, that they do like. They wanna save a little bit of time and the starter agreement, I'll apply it right now. We'll click on that and I'll just kind of show you how this works and then after we apply this one, I'll show you a couple steps about importing for anybody who might be from um, using the desktop software and don't have an agreement yet. So with the sample starter agreement, and you can follow along, it's not gonna break anything. You can always delete these. I'll click create agreement. And basically up at the top, you'll get the title of the template. And then immediately you'll want to change the agreement name so it does not say sample. I would just advise having it be called an agreement. The way the documents are presented to you and your client and things like that in the dashboard is alphabetical. So if it's agreement, it's going to come before inspection report. Or if you have termite inspection or other documents, agreement will come first and it just seems logical. So I always recommend calling it agreement. You can always do a dash or something like that. And if it's a specific agreement or if you want to put your company name there, I'll just say Susie's Home Inspections. You can, so you can have multiple agreements. So I could have a mold agreement or a commercial, residential, stuff like that if I felt like it. After that, with this sample starter template basically the top here is just a way to save you time it's got some basic stuff that majority of agreements have at the top of their document and i've pretty much helped save you some time by putting in our special code that will populate your customer's name so whoever is on that appointment it will populate their name here the date of the inspection here the address of the property here, and the total of the fees. All of this is adjustable. Maybe you don't wanna share your fee on the agreement. Sure, that's fine. You can always delete that, but this is just to help kind of get you started. So it's got the bookends of a legal document. Up at the top, it also has a, a code that will bring in your logo from your inspector profile and your, your website as well. So, you can change, you know, the title, any of this stuff. It's just basically to get the, the ball rolling for you. And then this area in the middle, this red text, you can just highlight it and then delete it. And then in the middle, you go to wherever you have your agreement document. So you might have it on a Word doc somewhere or something like that. You can basically copy and paste your text 
right here. You can just do control C and control V, and then any of your text will show up in this middle area. If you are copying and pasting from a PDF document, just double check the formatting. PDFs tend to have spacing when you copy and paste into other areas like this. So a lot of times you'll see a disconnected sentence where there's an extra carriage return or a space. So just be aware of that. You might have to go and put your cursor at the end of a line and hit the backspace to kind of align it. But it will save you a lot of time from having to type everything out. After you've pasted your text into this area, just look out for any fill in the blank areas that you might have. So if you do have a sentence that says something specific about maybe your company name and you know you you want to fill that in, just make sure it's filled in or if it's something specific about the property, uh, maybe it's listing in the text of the document that there's a specific date. Just think about those things and know that some of that's already covered up here and you might be okay to erase certain parts of your agreement because it's already addressed like the property address or the fee. So this area at the bottom, that's just some text that a lot of people like, you know, for a legal document to have um, at the bottom of their agreement. Basically just says, as a courtesy, a copy of this report will be sent to your real estate agent representative for you unless you notify us by email not to send a copy. So it just cuts out a step of having to get permission and to have another phone call or email or text message with your client and ask them, is it okay to share this with the agent? It puts that right here. Most people are fine with it. You would know in your state and your market if this is not typically uh, acceptable, but most home inspectors, this is totally acceptable. And it just cuts out that back and forth communication and puts it right there. If they do have a problem, you have a paper trail that says it. So it just covers you and makes the experience just a lot easier. The next line here as well, it just covers, you know, if viewing this online, in the customer's experience, there's a little I agree button. So it just kind of lays it out to the terms, conditions, spell down the agreement, and then they have to click sign. And then there's this little section at the bottom, just in the case that you need to print it out and somebody needs to sign with a pen and paper because that does happen from time to time. I'm sure everybody's been there. There's an area for them to sign, you know, physically with a pen and paper if needed. All right, so that's a starter agreement. Does anybody have any questions about this one? I think it's kind of become the most widely used one unless you're using the ASHI or the InterNASHI um, sample agreements. All right, cool. All right, so once you're done and you filled out the middle area, um, maybe you wanna add some more adjustments, some more code to pull in other things. I'll share a little bit about where to find these codes because you can use them in email templates and other areas of the home gauge ecosystem so the different code uh, codes that we use are we'll refer to them as replacement variables or sometimes we refer to them as merge fields and there's a whole bunch of them i just added a few basic ones here but if you want other options there's an option at the bottom of this agreement template right here. It's a hyperlink that says replacements. If you click on that, it shows all your replacement variables that you can use. On the left, you'll see the different codes. In the middle, you'll see a description of what that really means. And then on the right, it's just some basic examples. It's not real data. It's just pulling in some fake data. Although at the way bottom, you'll see a section on inspector details, and this will show you real data that is in your inspector profile. So you'll see, um, you know, if you have your uh, profile photo, it will show it there, your logo if you've added it, things like that. If you haven't added it, you can definitely go to the profile section in your dashboard, the bottom left, and add that information. So, you know, if I ever, if I wanted to put my, profile photo. I would just highlight 
this code here, control C, and then go to the dashboard and wherever I wanted to add this, I wouldn't actually add it to an agreement. So this is not a good example, but sometimes you can add your profile photo to like an email and it's nice to have that. But for this example, let's use, let's say that I wanted to list out all the different services rather than just have a total. Um, I can show you how that happens. So this section right here is like uh, report or real estate information. It's, they're all kind of categorized in little chunks. So we've got inspector details, real estate agent section right here. Um, this is all customer and service related. So for services, once you get used to what you're looking for, it makes more sense. But let's say that I wanted to add the list of all my services with a total at the bottom. So I would go to, uh, I'd go to services simple. I like that one the best. Uh, do control C. So service is simple, just basically lists a column for the service and then the price. There's no total at the bottom. I'll have to add that. There's also this other one called services info. This one does not have a price. It's the one right here. And then there's services full, which includes service. If you've added a description to your service, that's a little bit more uh, copy and more uh, verbiage there. Not everybody does that, so it doesn't make sense for everybody. And then the price. I'd say services symbols tend to be the, the most widely used. So I'll do control C, I'll go to my dashboard, and then wherever I want this to appear, I'll put my cursor there and do control V. And again, this doesn't give a total, so I'll just do another space there. And I'll go right up to the top of my browser and click on the tab for the replacement variables. And I'll look for the one that says services total as well. Control C and then Control V. And so I can go and bold that if I want to, and that will pull in all, all the different services. So that's a pretty common one to add. Feel free to, you know, use this in agreements and then when we get over to email templates they'll also come into play as well all right so before we move on and click save i did want to show you that you can click this button here that says associate with services and if you have services added you might not but we will get to that next you have different options so i can say this agreement this is my basic residential agreement Every single time I add this to an appointment, I don't even want to think about having to click something to add it. I just want it to link automatically. So I can check this. This is a select all. So all these services that I have that are residential, I'll just check those and click select. After I do that, I can click save agreement changes. I think somebody is on mute. Okay, cool. So right now we click save. It just confirms up at the top that your agreement template has been saved. And then you'll notice right here where it says associated services. Now it shows 10 services are kind of linked to this agreement. We also have a preview button right here. So if you want to view this, you can click preview and it just shows you what it would look like formatting wise with some fake kind of fictitious information filled out. And that just opens it up in another tab. So I'll just close out of that. All right, so I've added this one agreement and you can add multiples. So for the sake of showing you how to, let's just take account, uh, just a count of folks who are on the call. Is anybody using classic HomeGage desktop software? You have your pre-inspection agreement already in the software and you want to start using this online calendar. Raise your hand if you are one of those folks, because otherwise we'll skip that step. There's just not too many people who are using the old school way. All right, so it doesn't seem like anybody is using the old way of doing agreements, which is great. So we'll skip over that one. 
I'm clicking create new agreement just to show you how easy it is to add one of these very common uh, sample ones here. So this one's like the sample InterNACHI. That's a really popular one. You just click that and do create agreement. There it is. You would definitely, you know, always go here and erase the sample part because that does not look professional. <laughs> so this is what the customer would see. And then you'll see it has the replacement variables already filled in and all the InterNACHI requirements for an agreement. And then I'll just go down here and click Save. So I've added two agreements to my list of agreements that I can easily apply to anything. Now, if I click this drop down, I'll see the two different ones I have. And, and basically that's, that's about it. Once you have your agreement template set, you don't really need to go in here. Like I've seen this from time to time, people will just take that replacement variable and they'll add their property address and hit save. So basically once you've added your agreement, it's a template and you're not really gonna touch it again unless maybe your attorney said to change some verbiage. All right, so the next thing on our list for setting up the appointment so we can start using it would be to go into the services and the fees. This is where you have your price list. So under appointments, we'll go to inspection services next. All right, so for inspection services, if you don't have anything here and you're brand new, you're presented with an option to create new services from scratch, bring in services from classic home gauge, the old way, which I don't think anybody here would be doing that if nobody here was using agreements the old way. So we'll just skip that. Or there's a button to load up the default services. A lot of times folks will do the default. So if you click use the default, awesome. You can always delete them, um, but you don't have to. So I'm just showing you what the default services looks like. So there are three different groups to the default. So if you click that, you'll have a group called our complete home inspection. And it basically puts all the price points by square footage. I'll show you how to adjust the prices to meet your prices if you like that structure. You're not required to do this kind of pricing. You know, you can basically create whatever prices you'd like. Um, you can even be super simple and you can just type in home inspection, $350. Home inspection, $400. You know, you, you don't even have to, you know, get crafty with this, um, but it is very common. So that's why our default is like that. Where it says 150 minutes here up at the top, 180, 190, stuff like that. Our calendar will automatically block off that chunk of time for you. It's not set in stone. You can always adjust it when you're booking. You can manually say when you want an appointment to end, but we're trying to save you some time. So we're just blocking off that for you. And uh, it has to be done in minutes. So the estimated average time for that size home is around 150 minutes, 180 stuff like that. This last one at the bottom, I'll point out, this is a quantity um, pricing. So when you have a home that's 6,000 you know, square feet, basically you would add this one here for 525. And then this price is done by the quantity. So you can just type in any additional fee, uh, square feet over 5,000. So you can type in 1,000 and it will multiply it by 25 cents per square foot. So you can basically adjust that to whatever price you want. It kind of adjusts the minute minutes as well. We'll go into more detail on the quantity option in a moment. The second service group is additional services. So we've got different things like radon test with a home inspection, radon test alone, mold test, stuff like that. If you do these things, keep them and you can adjust the prices. If you don't do these things, but maybe are looking to add it later, you can actually move it out of here. So 
it's still there and you can easily add it back to your list. It's just not in this uh, visible area. And later on, if you're doing public appointments, it won't be shown to other people. I'll show you how to delete this. Let's say that you're never going to do radon. Maybe you're in Florida or you know some place where there's not a lot of basements. If you highlight the inspection service, it opens it up. And we'll go through all the steps to kind of edit this in a minute, but you can just go down to the bottom and click delete. And then it will say, are you sure you want to delete the service and click yes. I encourage everybody who, you know, loaded up the default services to go through and delete any of the services that don't apply to you. That way you just have a very streamlined experience when you are booking appointments. So just go through. I wish there was a faster way, but you actually, you know, you do need to click onto it. Just scroll to the bottom and click delete and just clean those up. So all the services are just ones that you're going to want to edit and change the price and make it match uh, the services that you offer. So the last service group here, this is the discount group. And there's just a few of them that you can use um, ready to go. And I'll show you how to add a flexible discount as well that you can kind of create your own pricing on the fly of how much you want to knock off somebody's inspection. You know, maybe it's a first time homeowner um, and you don't want to do a straight $20 every time you want to actually do, you know, a flexible amount. I'll show you how to do that. I have one already added here and it is using that quantity feature where you're typing in a number and it's multiplying it by um, a, you know, a dollar value. So I'll go into that in just a second as well, but I just basically wanted to show you the three different groups for the default. So I've got discounts down here, additional services, and then our complete home inspection. You can add more groups to suit your needs, but the groups are there to basically help you be more efficient when you're booking inspections. And it helps people, you know, when they're viewing your calendar online, um, it helps them get to the right services faster as well. Uh, you can do certain things with service groups. So this group right here, if I click on it, I can move it around. So just so you know, you can move these and change the order of your groups really easily. You can also, you know, change the order of the inspections just by clicking and dragging. But you can also see right there where it has the world. It says available and public appointments. That whole group, if I had the public appointment feature turned on, which I, I don't think I do right now, but if I did have it on, people would be able to see these services. It would be available where they could select it. On Thursday, we'll get into the details. You can hide prices and just have the titles and little nuances like that. Uh, but just so you know, services groups are used also so you can take a chunk and say people can see this. But maybe I have a group for super special agents, you know, that, you know, I've been working with forever and they kind of have this grandfathered in price or what have you. You know, you can have a, a, a section that's visible only to you. You'll see here in additional services, this whole group is available, but there are certain individual inspection services that are hidden. So the group in general is available, but a few of them, you can adjust the specific service to say, everybody in this group, sure, public appointments. But this fee here for houses built before 1950, I'm not gonna add that. I might add it myself to the appointment, but not for everybody. So that's a little bit about that. Now I'll just show you how to add your own service group. So let's say that maybe you have a bunch of, maybe you're in Florida and you do a ton of condos and there's just different levels of condos and you want to have your own service group so you can quickly go to the condo group and apply one bedroom, two bedrooms, three bedrooms, that kind of thing. If I go to new service group, I have some options here. It's pretty simple. I can add my name, condos. I can give it a description. I'm not going to do that just to save time, but if you wanted to, you could. Uh, the description is visible publicly if you were to turn on your public calendar. 
There's an option here that says services in this group are available in public appointments. Again, if I check that right here, basically it's available if I have the feature turned on. But if you have not enabled it, which takes a couple different steps, don't worry about it. You can check it and it's fine. It's just if you have public appointments enabled. After that, so I've got my, my name here pretty much and I'll just click save service group. It's all the way at the bottom. I wanna move it up a little bit because people select it a lot or I will be selecting it a lot. So it's right after my regular residential. And then to add services to this group, I'll go right here to new service. In new service, you know, you can go to service name and give it any kind of name that you would like. So I'll do condo, one bedroom. I'll do a few of them. So I'll just control C and copy that so I don't have to repeat typing um, condo over and over again. A description is available. This quantity area, I'll skip that for now, but we will go into detail on how to use that. Time required, this is where you kind of give an estimate of the time required. Now, you're not required to use the time required. Uh, you can leave it zero. You know, you might be somebody who always wants to put the end time and have, you know, full control. Not like you're going to lose control, but you might want to always say 9 to 11. I'm always going to do that. I don't want the system to automate that for me. That's up to you. For the time required for a condo, I'll just put, you know, 90 minutes, something like that. Skip over quantity descriptor. And then for the fee, I'll add my fee. Maybe it's 300. If you've got to put in a tax rate for whatever reason, sometimes I think folks in Canada sometimes have to do that. Uh, you can do that there. Uh, let's see here. For service groups, this is where you say, okay, I want this service to appear in the condos service group. This is where you can specifically go to the service level of this appointment. And you know maybe the whole group is public, but you want this one to be private. You can use that checkbox there. This section right here, this is, if you're a single inspector, you can skip over it and just go down to the bottom and hit save. If you're a multi-inspector, you'll see different um, employees in your company and maybe some of them specifically do water, radon, mold, and home inspections, but then there's a couple that don't. So only the people who can do this service, you'll wanna add their name to this side here. Again, if you're a single inspector company, you can just leave it and then click save. There is an option here because we did add an agreement. So you can tell the software to every time you select this service to choose a specific agreement. I know we just did that when we were creating the agreement. So in HomeGage, there's, there's two ways to do it. You can do it here where you select the agreement and it's kind of on an individual basis every time you create a service. Or what we did earlier when we were at the agreement template, I select it all and it's just more efficient that way. So um, just so you know, there's two different ways to link an agreement. Um, after that, I'll click save service and that's added here. You'll see it under my condo section. Before we move on, I'm going to show one more example of adding a service with the quantity option. So I'll go up here to new service and let's say that I want to have a condo inspection, but I, I, I fluctuate. I don't know my pricing yet. I, it's always custom. You can do this with regular inspections, condos, um, discounts. I'm going to go here and click the allow quantity. I'll leave the time required zero. Quantity descriptor, I'm just going to leave blank as well. And then for this, I'll just put $1. So when I'm booking the appointment, I just type out the dollar value and it will multiply that by one. So if it's $478, I just try 478 and it creates it um, the fee 478. So if you are doing this for maybe a discount, for a flexible discount, you'd want to do negative $1. So that's how you do the quantity option and we'll put it to use in a minute. So I have my condo inspection. 
$1 fee. So pretty much any time I apply this, I can choose whatever price I want. And then I'll have it in the condos service group. I'll scroll down to the bottom and click save service and it's added. All right, so I'm basically just going to check in to see if we have any questions about service groups before we move on. Those are the main two things that you set up um, before you can really truly go in and book an appointment. No, nope. all right, cool, cool. The next step that we'll do, we're going to skip over some parts of all these different settings. They're not quite necessary to go into to book an appointment. And I want to go through the appointment workflow of what it's like to schedule an, um, an inspection. I do have some videos that you know will cover all this stuff in a lot of detail that you can watch and I'll, I'll provide that um, in, let's see here, in the chat in a second. We'll go in and book an appointment. So there's a couple ways to do it. You can click on new appointment or the calendar. I prefer to go to the calendar first just because it gives you a lay of the land. You've got the day, the week, the month here. And then wherever you want the appointment to appear, you can either click new appointment up here or wherever the date and the time is, like let's say my mouse is on 10 o'clock on Wednesday. I'll just double click there. And this is the new appointment form. So this form that we're looking at right now, it's the same thing if you had gone in here and clicked new appointment. You'd be looking at the same screen. But the cool thing is it filled out the time for me and the date. So it just saved me a few clicks. While I'm here at the top, I'm just going to point out that we also can track any personal appointments that you might have that you need to block off. So you can click this set as time off checkbox right there. And you can put in a start time and end time and give a reason. This is only for your knowledge, so nobody's gonna know that you're out for drinks with your buddy. Uh, you know, <laughs> they're not gonna see that. They'll see that you're you're busy <laughs> or whatever. So just so you know, that's there for your own benefit. So you can you know manage appointments and other things going on in life, vacation time, hopefully. So I will uncheck this box and it goes away. And the full appointment form shows. This first section is already filled out. I do have this box checked that says automatically update the appointment end time based on the duration of the service that I select. And that's when that estimated time frame will come in. So if I select a service and it says estimated 180 minutes, it will automatically block off that time for me. But the thing is, I'm going to show you how to use that kind of fill in the blank service, the one that where you can fill in your own condo inspection fee on the fly. And that one, because it's a $1 variable that you're multiplying, you don't want to put an estimated time on that one. You, you want to fill it out yourself. So I know that this condo is going to be pretty quick. I'll just say it goes till 1130 is what I'll block off. And I'll uncheck this box here. I'll scroll down and this is where you can fill out basic property details. We also have the convenience of Google that will fill in as you start typing out um, the property address based on your location. So I'll just click that. It fills it in for me. You'll notice this box right here that says, no, before you go, get the full build facts report. This is a little pop-up. It's a preview of a report that you can purchase through your HomeGage dashboard at a discount. So build facts is a company, but basically this is just a snapshot of this property. It shows that there were 17 permits pulled, 14 contractors, total job costs. It will you know, show obviously the possible aging systems so that, you know, if there's a lot of information that you think would be helpful to you to know before going on this, you know, inspection, you can buy it. The kicker though is do not click this button right here. Just refrain from it. I know it, it looks really like you want to click it, but just don't do it. There's another area. If you click it right now, the appointment's not really created yet and it won't 
be linked appropriately. So I kind of wish that just wasn't there. So this is just your preview. You can add directions. There's a map. You can add your driving distance mileage. There's a report that you can do for mileage at the end of the year for your taxes. This area for report ID, HomeGage will fill in a, a specific link that will link this appointment to your agreement, to your invoice, stuff like that. Um, we try to cut out the step and we, we create it for you. So it has this box here that says auto generated. Um, it's just easier to do that. So just I would just roll with it and let HomeGage create it for you. Uh, there's a way to track referrals as well. This inspector comments box, this uh, this would be like internal notes. So if you you know wanted to write a lockbox code or um, just some you know office inter office communication, you could do that. The customer won't see it, just you, the inspector will. Uh, other things that you can fill out about pets and things like that. Uh, the year it was built, you're not required to do any of this, but you can. I'll skip over this to save on time. And then this is where you can add your services that we created. So I'll click Add Update Services. I can simply check one of these boxes and it will add it. But I will go over here to the condo one and show you how this quantity variable works. So I'll check the box next to condo inspection. In the quantity, I'll put, uh, let's say it was $300. I'll just type 300 multiplies it by one dollar. I'll click add services and that gets added to my invoice. The client does not see quantity, price, stuff like that. They just see condo inspection 300. You can go in and add more. Maybe I want to add a discount. I created one of those quantity discounts here. So maybe it was $5. I'll type in a five. It will multiply it by negative one dollar. And I have uh, my invoice here. You've got a few options here that I'll quickly explain. So where it says request payment, that's basically adding the invoice for your client to see. So if you have request payment checked, they'll see an invoice. When they log in to sign their agreement, they're presented with an invoice. HomeGage makes it super easy for people to pay online. And so if you don't know this already, we have our own credit card processing. So you sign up with HomeGage for credit card processing. We've got great rates. You can actually, a new feature where you can add the credit card convenience fee, which is called the surcharge. Um, you can add that to their invoice automatically and set the percentage that you wanna add. So not everybody wants to do that, but it's an option. So you can sign up with credit cards. People can pay easily online. You can just have them pay, but if you want to save some costs, which is very common this day and age with pretty much a lot of the online billing, you can also add that surcharge to the invoice and you know save on your own credit card fees, which is pretty cool. So request payment here. Let's say that you haven't signed up to do credit cards online. That's fine. Um, eventually, it's definitely a smart thing to do. You can still keep this box checked and they'll have an invoice on their end. You do do home gauge payments and have it checked. It automatically will put a pay now button so they can easily pay online from anywhere, anytime. You're not having to get a payment and then release the report and things like that. It's just all automated. As soon as they click pay now and it goes through, the report is available and people just love the convenience of it. As I scroll down a little bit further, there's require payment to view documents. That's automatically applied if you do credit cards with HomeGage. So people can't pass go and see the report until they've paid. There's an option here to allow the agent to pay for the inspection as well. And then down here where it says agreements, we've got our list of agreements and you can click on agreement, whatever one you've chosen to add it to the selected side. So this section is where you add your customer's info so that they get the emails that say, you know, hey, your appointment is ready, um, your report is ready, that kind of thing. To add a customer, you can do it two ways. If you have existing customers, you can simply search them by just typing their first name, their last name, their email. So I'll just start typing 
Maria and I don't have a Maria, but you can see that it has a nice search feature for existing customers. To add a new one, pretty easy. Click create new customer. I'm just typing in the people who do my tires on my car, Jan Davis. <laughs> um, and then I'll type in a fake email just for the purpose of this test. But I'll put in Jan Davis, an email there.com. That's the basic information. You can put a phone number here. It's always good to have that handy. Um, if you ever need a phone number, it's always available for you. Um, you can fill out the other fields. Really over here where it says address, I would just skip over that because typically they're moving from their current address. Uh, this just doesn't come into play um, as much. So just these basic fields here and then click create new customer. You're, You'll see them down here at the bottom to add a different person. So maybe you have a, another person like a husband or a wife or partner or whoever. You can click create new customer and add a second person. Same with adding an agent. It's the same process. So we're done with this. We've basically filled out this whole form here with the basics. It goes a lot faster, I promise you, when you're used to it. You'll click schedule appointment. This is the next step. So there's three parts. You fill out the form. Here you just review your agreement, make sure everything looks good. You can go in and adjust something. So maybe something didn't show up properly. You can actually click in that document and make changes if you want. Um, if you don't want the agent to actually view the agreement, you can click this. Uh, sorry, by default, agents don't have permissions to view the agreement. They'll never have signing permissions, but you know, some people, maybe there's somebody with some kind of, maybe somebody's mother's the agent and you wanna have them have the document so they can view, you can always click yes. So that's what that toggle is. Once you're good and you recognize that everything looks good in the agreement, you'll just click this button here that says create agreement document. I know we're running right up at one o'clock, so I'll just run through this workflow super quick here. The last step is sending out the email notifications. HomeGage makes it super simple because we have a template for you and you can customize the template, but basically you don't have any need of going in and typing somebody's email, typing their name, crafting a, a kind message. You know, we can do that for you every time. So basically when you get to this step, You'll just click send notifications at the bottom. Your customer will get their own email. Your agent, if you've added them, they'll get their email. You as the inspector, or if you're a multi-inspector company, um, your inspector will get the basic details. And then there's this extra email here that can be customized for another recipient, like maybe the seller's agent or the seller, or maybe you contract out a termite person. You can have a separate template for them. The way that you use other, you click view edit message and you add the email here. So this is a really good thing because they're not connected to the report. You don't have to worry about accidentally sharing the report with them because they're not connected. This email is somewhat separate. Whereas the customer right here would be connected and so would be the uh, so would the agent. So this is for folks that are not gonna be viewing the report. So once you're verified that, you know, everybody that needs to get the emails are all listed, you just click send notifications and it takes you back to your calendar where you will see your booking and you can always go in and adjust it by double clicking. Here you can change different things and go down to the bottom if you make any changes to save changes. There's a little tab at the top called actions. And I'll just point out a few things. If you need to resend emails, that's how you get to the emails. Um, if you wanna print out your job, you can click print and it will show uh, the basic details. So you can print it out and have it with you if you're driving around. And then this is the most important thing here. There's an option to create a web inspection. If you're using the web writer, 
Uh, this is how you sync the appointment data to start a report in WebWriter. So you can go to Actions, click Create Web Inspection, and hold on a second. There we go. So basically, it opened up another tab in my browser. So I'm over here and I'm in my appointment on the dashboard. I clicked Create Web Inspection and it opened up the WebWriter report writing tool in that inspection. So I'm on my 55 Main Street. I'm ready to go. I can you know, start doing my inspection if I need to. Maybe I'm not ready to do the inspection. If I hit back to inspections, it's just kind of listed here and I can go into it later. So I just wanted to point that out. One more thing before I take any questions. I know some people might have to drop off for lunch and that is totally cool. I appreciate you coming. The appointment calendar also syncs with um, regular classic desktop so and the HomeGage Companion. So I just want to show you how that works. Let's what say was, I want to take let's say I want to take Monday off, but I want to take the whole week off. How do I make it take the whole mark the whole week off or let's say every Tuesday I went off. So let me get to that in a second. So I'm just going to complete the workflow, but I will address that. Um, so the just completing the workflow of a regular home gauge. Ah, all right, here's my icon for regular home gauge. So I was on my dashboard. Where did it go? All right, so I was on my dashboard, right? And I booked my appointment. It's sitting there. Now it's time for the inspection. I can go to my home gauge desktop software and make sure HG services up at the top is logged in with your username and password. I'm just typing in my username and password that connects to this calendar and I'll click OK. I'll go back to HG services. This is the menu that kind of controls different functions that include going to the internet for whatever reason. So I've got HG services here and I will select download online appointments. And this window popped up on my other uh, browser. It shows my appointment here. I have it selected to download now and I just click download and I'll get a little pop up that says your reports downloaded. Go to open reports to see it. So to begin my report so I don't have to retype out the customer's name, the address, everything like that. I can go to open here and I'll see the beginnings of my report. So I'll just highlight that and click open. And now I've got all that filled out. So I don't need to fill out customer. I don't need to fill out any of the details here, the invoice, anything like that. I can just select my template, you know, and go from there. The HomeGage Companion also has that same option where you can go into that and it go to HG Services download online appointments. So both the WebWriter report writing tool and the HomeGage desktop, they both will save you time because you don't have to repeat, uh, you know, typing out any of that information. It just starts the report for you and fills out those fields. All right, so back to your question. Give me one second just to pull you up so I can see you. All right, so you had a question about about blocking off a lot of time like let's say you go to you know on vacation for a week is that what you were asking yeah let's say every i go on a week because right now i have to do it i have to do it every single day or i every like every friday afternoon i'm off mm -hmm. i don't want people, i don't want people booking that i don't want to be booking accidentally how would you do it like every week or every day six days in a row all right so if you are if you're wanting people to not book you in the public calendar, which I'll go into detail with on Thursday, but there is a setting when you're setting up your public calendar, you can basically just say Fridays, I'm not here, you know, and, and pretty much every Friday, nobody's going to see a booking available. It'll just say, you know, it'll just look like you're not available. You could be inspecting, you could be on vacation, nobody knows. It just, it's not available as an open appointment. Um, so that's the best way to do it if you have a specific day off and you're worried about people booking it publicly. If, let's say that maybe it's not every Friday, you know, maybe it's something like you're taking off four days in a row, 
but next week you're going to be there for those four days. Um, I believe that you can. I, I feel like we have a feature request for multiple days off. OK, so there is an active feature request for that, though. So that is something that is not available right now where you can do multiples in one shot, um, unfortunately. Uh, but hopefully in the future, I don't know where it is in the kind of list of priorities, but it is an active feature request. Do we have any other questions? I could show you one more thing that's kind of handy that I like that a lot of people don't notice um, if we don't have any questions. It's just our map feature. So HomeGage has a, a way to see where all your appointments are for the day um, on a map. So you know kind of where you're driving and maybe can prioritize people or inspections that are closer together. That's a great idea. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I'll just show you that. Um, Right here, I'm looking at, uh, what are we on? We're on Wednesday the 24th. If I click to the switch to daily view, uh, it brings me to Tuesday the 23rd for whatever reason, but um, I can just use the arrows here to go one more over. So on the daily view, if I'm on the daily view, I have an option for a map. Multi-inspector companies love the daily view because sometimes there's, you know, 20 inspectors and it's just easier to see everybody kind of in a, you know, in these different um, rows. So if you're a multi-inspector company, you might love this view as well. Uh, if you're, you know, a single inspector and you're filling up your days and you want to check and see where everybody is and you get a phone call or you get a message or maybe somebody books online and they want an inspection at this certain time, you can click on your map. So if I clicked on my property there, um, you would see the inspection show up. I'm kind of used to seeing multiple inspections. I think if you have multiples, they'll show up automatically. And you see the details if you hover over it. Well, that's how you do the calendar view and the map. To get back to your main calendar, uh, just click the switch to calendar view there, and you're back to the beginning. All right, so that's the basic setup of your appointments and the workflow of booking an appointment. On Thursday, if you'd love to just come here and spend the lunchtime with me again, I'll show you how to optimize the public calendar. Well, you guys have a wonderful day and please join me again on Thursday.